Okay, so a little bit of a backstory here. I'm Mark Franken from Marked in Time, and I'm a professional watch uh, repair person. Um, some people call it watchmaking. So this is the first time that I decided to do a uh, teardown on a watch um, uh, while filming. So you have to understand that um, I take watchmaking very, very seriously and repairs. Um, when I'm repairing somebody else's watch, it's a timepiece that they love, of course, and um, I do my best to make sure that the uh, end result, uh, like a watch restoration, is done perfectly. So the funny thing about this video is that I've never done one behind a camera, and I look like an absolute asshat working here. This is a film for f basically humor. Trying to video and then work on a watch at the same time um, I usually I'm using either a loop or a uh, set of um, magnified goggles that um, brings the watch really close to my eyesight so I'll be able to work with uh, precision so working without anything um, and then trying to go through my uh, through the camera is absolutely asinine it's it's a complete joke here um and so i found this video to be uh extremely amusing so for fellow watchmakers out there if you want to see a professional trying to do something for the first time it felt like literally the first time i worked on a watch <laughs> years ago it is it is it's hilarious um so I just removed the uh, balance complete out of this watch and usually I pick up the uh, balance wheel at the same time as the bridge but I just kind of like yanked it out because again um, yeah it, it was it was just trying to see something um, through the camera is so completely different and uh, now I decided I was going to start working on the keyless I was going to remove the um, spring here Oh, nope, nope, nope. Putting the uh, winder back in. You had to take tension off of the. Uh, and this is what happens when you're when you're when you're split focus. Usually, when I'm focused working on a watch, I I have a set way of doing something. And um, here, I got this camera just kind of like sitting right in front of me. Um, the, one of the first things I do, um, I remove the. Um, I, I will remove the balance complete, and then I take tension off of the mainspring. So all of a sudden, I decided, oh crap, I forgot to do that. So here we go. I'm just setting up my uh, vise here to, um, so this here I was doing with a little bit of professionalism. And then uh, again, there's the little click, tiny, tiny, tiny. I'm trying to do this while looking through a camera, fumbling along. Um, interesting thing though, you can really tell that this is a very, very dirty movement because I, uh, had to really you can see how slow the retractors on that spring like it is just i haven't opened the barrel up yet but um it must be packed with grease because this is a really dirty movement uh, the bridges look clean and they're shiny but um it just you can see the way when i took pressure off that mainspring for those who don't know uh, you don't want it to snap back or uncoil in it quickly, so you hold the uh, the crown and let it just slidely uh, let let the uh, um, the crown slide um, through your fingers as it unwinds. But there, I actually had to try to force the uh, almost force the spring from unwinding. Here I am trying to find the screw. Oh my God, this is this is embarrassing. <laughs> almost put it in the hole there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's what happens when you're trying to go through a uh, camera to uh, see what you're doing. I'll get that out. At least my tactile uh, is still the same. Love the tweezers. There we go. Now I'm like, okay, now I got to take this part off. See, right now I would have the loop like really close. Like I would know what I'm doing, but this is just pull out the brass stick there. And yeah, I miss all the parts that I'm trying to disconnect. And try it that way. Oh, let's push on the wheel a little bit there. Oh my God. There we go. That came out. And now what am I doing? Oh man. Oh man. And then trying to do this just... So I know there's a spring there, okay? You have to understand. So there's the setting lever. I know there's a spring there, and I don't want to lose the spring because, man, it, it, fellow watchmakers and repair people, you know what it's like to try to find these damn springs on the floor. 
um, when they zip off. And I tell you, for those who don't know, these things can go quite a distance when they spring out of the uh, out of the main plate. So here I am trying to loosen that spring up to be able to try to catch it before it takes off. That actually worked. I'm surprised. Uh, actually, I don't even think I know that the spring is off yet. I'm still trying to pin something down that's not even there. Now I think I realize, hey, there's the spring. There we go. So that's removed. I'll try to get the setting lever out. Okay. Oh man! So now you see, if I if I had my loop and I was looking, I could see. Oh, that's got to come straight up, right? Like I could work that straight up. But trying to do something from a distance without wearing glasses, without any kind of a uh, visual aid, I'm just now, I, I'm a newbie at this point here. I'm just fiddling with this thing, just trying to pry this thing up. Like what the hell? Like let go, let go. And of course, I'm trying to make it look professional at the time. Like, this was supposed to be a tutorial. Like, that's what this video was uh, going to be. I was going to see if I can maybe do... Oh, it's gone now. I was going to do some kind of a tutorial and show people how I take something apart. So I'm trying to make this as professional as possible. Decided I'd go back and try to edit. But there's so many mistakes. It's, yeah, I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, yeah, dumbass. That's still screwed into place. Yeah, you got to unscrew that from the other side. Yep, there we go. There we go. So that's out. That's out. Yeah, I got most of the keyless out. Uh, now I'm just with a big screwdriver. Hey, what are we going to get next? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's go for a smaller screwdriver, maybe. Yeah, those screws are a lot smaller. I don't know what I'm doing now. I guess I'm looking for the smaller screwdriver. There we go. There we go. Got the smaller. Yeah, missed the screw completely. Let's just drill that into a wheel. There we go. And we have contact. Nope, nope, not quite. Not quite. Just still fuddling in the dark here. There we go. There we go. Now oh, it's coming out. I figured I was going to lose these two screws. I figured the way this is going. Thank God I got these brand new tweezers. Look, look how sharp those things are. I think at one point in the video, I actually stabbed myself with the tweezers too. Like, this is just a complete disaster. Look at that. I missed the second screw. Oh, yeah. That's just going to come out with one screw. Oh, hey, look. There's another one there. There we go. Now I'm going to get the second screw out here. By now, I am so internally embarrassed, but I figured, you know what? Screw it. I'm this far into it. I am going to complete this. I am going to complete this. Figured maybe I can edit some of this out, but I just thought this was just hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. So this piece comes out pretty easily. Here we go. There we go. Uh, there's the setting mechanism, there's settings, gear, so that comes out okay. This one comes out okay, if I can see it, there we go. This is a pretty nice movement actually. And I'll decide to show PWC60. That comes out. That actually came out really easy. I figured that would be um, a bit of a harder thing to remove. I still kind of figuring out where the jewel caps. Oh yeah, that's right. That fell out of my. Uh... Come on. Pick that up. <laughs> I keep missing because I'm trying to do this looking through the camera, right? So uh, the depth perception is completely gone. So I think I'm like close to being able to pick it up and I just miss it completely. Just miss it completely. By the way, I'm just using bare hands um, while doing this because um, right now, right after this disassembly, the movement went into a cleaner. So I've mentioned quite often about leaving oils onto the metal. But um, like I said, I was just taking this apart and it's going to go right into the cleaner. Um, thankfully, I didn't lose any parts doing this. Uh, well, I don't really lose parts. I just usually spend a long time on the floor with a high-powered uh, flashlight trying to find the parts. But um, although I have to admit, I haven't uh, lost a part in a while. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, how well am I going to approach this disaster? I think at this point, there we go. I'm going to remove the... Oh, this is hilarious. Yeah. So I use one of these nylon, um, so w without, if you're trying to remove an, um, the winding wheel, right? So the barrel wheel, uh, if it's not held in place, oh, there goes the barrel wheel with the, uh, 
And you know what the funny thing was? What was going through my mind is, where the hell did that go? Where did that go? I just unlocked it. Where did it go? Stuck to the uh, nylon stick. Lovely. Take a look at that. A lot of scratching in there too, eh? You can see there's an, um, a lot of scratching on the inside of that wheel. I just really find that interesting. What? All the teeth were there, though. Sometimes if people overwind it, what they do is they don't break the barrel. They actually snap the teeth off of the uh, off that wheel. Now these screws here, for those no, you have to screw backwards on these ones. Eh? Some um, some movements, the um, that screw that I just removed has uh, four lines on it, four to five lines on it, and basically it's an indication that you have to um, wind it backwards to uh, uh, loosen it and tighten it. So this one comes off. It is so hard to do this, I tell you, without being able to use um, a loop. There we go. That's in good shape, too. I'm still using the camera as a magnifier at this point. That's why I'm trying to take a look at it. I'm not actually showing um, the wheel itself. I'm just looking at it for my own personal. There's the collar that just came off. Um, I was just actually looking at it to see if there was any damage done to the, those wheels. No damage done to the plates at all. It's actually, the, the, the look of the movement actually looks pretty clean. But there's a couple of telltale signs that this has not been serviced in a long time. And I'm still, and I've mentioned this, if you've seen my other videos, I've mentioned this before. It is missing the jewel caps, uh, which I find really interesting. I don't know where something like that would have gone. Um, maybe lost screws. Uh, sometimes if you, like the screws for these jewel caps are absolutely tiny. Don't ask me what I was doing there, why I was taking so long to get tweezers. Probably that's where I stabbed myself with them. Come on. There we go. You have to understand that when I'm doing this without a camera in front of me, this just takes me, it takes me like five minutes to strip a watch down. Like I, it, it doesn't take me long at all. But doing this behind the camera is, it's just absolutely, I can't believe how much of an tomfoolery that goes on trying to do this i don't know how other other guys do it i've obviously they must have the although it looks like the right angle to me now here you're going to see me chiseling along with a screwdriver um what happens is some of these bridge plates there's a little notch that you can slip the screwdriver into to pop it up off the main plate um and i was trying to find that so here i am just fiddling around here with the screwdriver okay where's that notch nope not there not there finally i give up just go right to the edge there we go, I'll pop it off that way. I am worried about the pivots though. This is not the proper way to do this because what you can do is quite easily snap a pivot off one of the wheels, but that didn't happen, thankfully. I got two other. This is a really interesting design for this movement, actually. Um, I'll show you in a second. Instead of the bridge holding all the train of wheels in place, it actually, there's a few internal bridges, which I find extremely fascinating. I've come across this before, but it's, it really is a well-designed and very rugged built movement. That's a beautiful wheel, actually. That is really nice. So now you can see like an internal plate, like a smaller, come on, buddy, get it. there we go. Um, if you look dead center, there's kind of an internal bridge that holds the rest of the wheels down, which I find extremely interesting. But it does make for a very, very sturdy movement. Um, this would take quite a bit of an impact to knock this thing out of whack. So what am I going for now? Oh, I'm going to take this plate off. No, I'm going to take the... I should be taking the click off right about now. I don't know what I'm doing there. I can't recall. Did I take the click off next? I know one thing. I'm looking at this going, this is silly. There we go, let's go for the click. Now there is a small, small spring that's underneath this click. It's a very common design. It's an, um, uh, like a half moon type spring. It's really small. And I'm usually extremely careful about losing that spring because I tell you, it's, a, it's, it's, like, this, it's like the size of a hair, like an eyelash. It's, it's really tiny. If you drop something like that, it is virtually impossible to find. Um, and here I am. I'm trying to look at it. How the hell does this click come out? Here we go. Come on. And this is, you, right now, like, if, if I didn't have a camera, if I was removing a click like this, I would have another tool in place to see if that spring doesn't shoot off. Oh, lost the click as well. 
There we go. There, and at least I didn't lose that. Now, there you see that tiny help? Let's move that out of the way. Oh, I'm just going to show the click here. Come on, focus. There we go. So that's the click. Small little piece. By the way, I love my new tweezers. Those tweezers. Now, you can just see this little hair there sitting on the side. That is the spring. I am so shocked that I didn't lose that. There we go. Well, that's removed. Now, I think I'm going to go for the outer bridge. Yep, there we go. So, that's the barrel bridge that I'm removing now. And there's another screw in here, too, that I forgot, which I'm, again, really embarrassing. Come on. Get this one out. These screws are easy. Beautifully designed movement, though. Absolutely, really nicely designed movement. It's going to be a pleasure to clean it, and um, I'm looking forward to the polishing process and putting it back together. Um... Uh, I think now I'm starting to realize that I'm forgetting something. Uh, it's not going to come off, is it? Yeah, now I'm starting to realize. Yeah, there we go. So what I'm taking off now is the... Um, so when, when, when you go to remove the uh, crown and stem, that little piece there I'm grabbing actually holds the crown and stem in place. And um, you just got to remove, you got to just loosen up and then that falls out. And take this bridge off. There we go. And there's the barrel. Yeah. And the barrel, which is really easy usually to get out, falls back into place. And now I'm going to dick around for about three, four seconds, try to figure out how to get that off. Oh my God. This is just... I'm putting it all out there for you guys. This is what happens when you try to do something different on something that you do all the time. And then you throw a camera in front of it thinking, oh, I'm going to do a tutorial. I'm going to look real professional like all the other big wig YouTubers. Yeah, no, it doesn't work that way. I'm new to this game, like really new to this game of YouTubing. And I tell you, I don't even open the barrel up. Let's just put that aside, go back to this. So there's that internal bridge. There's a jewel cap there, though, that's in place. I'm pretty surprised. You can see that holds the center wheel. That jewel cap is still there. I'm really surprised that the other jewel caps are missing. I'm really curious about that. Oh, let's just slide all over the place here. Oh, let's slide again. That one. Oh, the nice thing about doing a video like this, I don't have to uh, use a reference to try to put it back together. I have everything uh, right on camera. And that's going to come out. This is an interesting piece. For those who are just watching, this is not a common thing to have an internal bridge like this. But I tell you, it does make the movement rugged. A very interesting design. That, that's what I'm pointing there. That's the internal, uh, that's a jewel cap there that's actually in place. This is a bugger to get off this thing. You can really tell about the precision of when they, how they build these. Yeah, now I'm doing it properly. Just come straight from the top. Um, and then we got the center wheel. We got the escapement wheel comes out really easily. Put that aside. Center wheel is actually locked in up underneath the um, pallet fork bridge. That was actually really interesting. So I'm about to take the pallet fork bridge out. Um, I would have noticed that right away if I was just using a loop that I would have had to take the powder fork bridge out first. But again, I know this is going to sound like a broken record, but being behind a camera trying to do this, um, it, uh, yeah, I, you just can't see anything. That's I'm surprised I didn't lose any screws. Like I didn't have to search all over the place for these screws. Thank goodness that I have a brand new pair of tweezers. Get that one out. Now this really kind of scared me. So I, oh, <laughs> there goes one screw. Luckily it didn't go too far. It landed on my mat. Um, I love these mats, by the way. That mat, if you can see how grainy it is, um, it uh, anything like a screw doesn't go skidding across a table. It will literally stop instantly. So this bridge is on pretty tight, and I get a little bit of a panic because I get the bridge off, and the pallet fork goes with it. So, there's the bridge, 
and the pallet fork is stuck to the bridge. And when I turned it over, now you don't see this, I might be off camera, but it looked like I snapped um, the pivot on the pallet fork. Um, I'm very careful of this piece. The pallet fork is one of the more um, fragile pieces. The, like you have the balance wheel and the hairspring is really fragile. The pallet fork pins are really, really fragile. Um, also, especially with the pallet fork that has the jewels. Okay, I just put those away. But I thought I snapped the end off of the pallet fork, um, the, one of the pivots. But what it was is this watch is built for like, like a G-Shock, for crying out loud. The pivot is this really big, flat, chunky piece. And if you could see the jewel where, the, where that pallet fork goes into, it's a massive hole in that jewel. I'm pointing at it right there, and I think that's the reason why I was pointing at that jewel. Again, maybe trying to keep a little bit of a tutorial on this um, as a training video, but that um, that jewel is really wide, and then it all of a sudden dawned on me that that pallet fork actually sits, has a very big, big, big pivot. So I didn't break the end of it off, it's just a really large pivot. So at this point, I'm laughing my ass off. Like I am like literally, I'm I'm just like shaking my head going, this is embarrassing. But, um, yeah, you can really see that jewel. You can see how large that hole is on that one, uh, that one uh, jewel there. And that's what the pallet fork sits in. So there it is. It's completely stripped down movement. And I think this is pretty much the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Have a good night.